Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Isle of Sky. At this point, we have gone through the first out of six rounds in the game, and that happened in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link to it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. That way, if I make any mistakes while I play through the rest of this game, I can then put corrections on the screen, which will make this as accurate a playthrough as possible. All right, let's jump back into it. At this point, we are now starting the second round out of six in the game, and the first thing that we do, as always, is going to be taking income. Now we can start by looking at our territory. As always, we get five money for our castle, but we do also have some barrels of whiskey that are connected to our castle by a road. So that means we will get an extra money, so that is going to be six money total for income. Up here, blue is going to get seven money as income because they have two of these whiskey barrels connected to their castle. Lastly, the yellow player unfortunately just gets five money. Uh, maybe they went a little bit too aggressive with their pricing in the first round, but either way, they can now take this money. Now I should mention that there is no extra income yet for people being in front of us on the score track. That doesn't happen until the start of the third round of the game. All right, it's time for all of us to draw three tiles out of the bag. All right, it's now time to price out these tiles and, of course, associate our discard with one of them. And before we can really set any prices, we need to take a look and see what the options are for all of the tiles in this round. Now, I mentioned earlier that we are going to be scoring the farms in this round, and we are specifically going to get one point for every sheep and every cow that is orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to a farm or on the tile with a farm. Now, we have a farm right now, and neither of our opponents do. But then when I look at the new batch of tiles, it looks like there's a farm here, and we have a farm, but the yellow player did not draw one over there. Now, they did draw a scroll that gives you one point per farm at the end of the game, and the blue player got one of those as well. Now, we were able to get two tiles with the boats on them, but boats aren't going to score again until the end of the third round in the game. The next thing to look for are whiskey barrels. We don't have any on our tiles, and it looks like the yellow player has two, and the blue player has one of them. Now, at this point, I think we can start pricing things out. We have 10 money, and of course, we have to discard one of these three. So let's now consider these three tile options. Now, this one is a really good tile for the scoring, considering it has a farm and it already has two animals on it. Now, we already have a farm, but of course, getting more farms is not a bad thing, especially if we are able to pick up one of the two tiles that are currently on offer that give you points for having farms at the end of the game. In addition to that, we have one Brock, and remember the D scoring is going to be five points for every set of Brock, a lighthouse, as well as farm that we have in our area. So we do have a farm already, so working on that is good. And then this is also pretty good considering we are going to score the boat majorities two more times in the game, and the next one is coming up at the end of the next round. So I would not mind, I think, taking any of these tiles, although these two are probably more valuable than the other one. Now, of course, we do have to discard one of these, so we have to consider which one do we not want our opponents getting. Well, I suppose maybe we should just discard this middle one. It's quite powerful, obviously, like I just said, and currently there's just one other farm out for offer, and maybe that one will get discarded as well. If that happens, then we would be in a position to score our farm, or at least the animals around our farm, and our opponents would not be able to. So getting rid of this means that there will be a maximum of two farms out there in this scoring, so at least one person is not going to get points, and that's not going to be us. Next up, we can set some prices, and one thing to consider is the fact that we have a lot more money than our opponents do at the moment. Now, the yellow player, I believe, only has five money, and that's the five they just got for income, and the blue player should have more than that. I don't exactly remember what they ended the last round with. Either way, if we make our prices really high, then we are pretty much guaranteed to buy those tiles, and we might be able to do that and still have money left over to buy tiles from our opponents. That's definitely the advantage that we have going into this with more money. Of course, our opponents did both score, and we did not in the last round, and getting those points is obviously a good thing. So I am tempted to price this one out at three. Uh, maybe we'll go to four, and this one over here is a little bit less interesting overall. It does not have any animals on it to help scoring, but it does have one boat, which obviously will help for that majority, which is going to score two more times. Now we could put two money down on that, and I suppose we could add a little bit more by breaking this five. And I think we should do that. 
Now we could make this one a three and this one a four over there. I suppose if we did that, then we would have three money left over. Now I'm pretty confident we'll be able to pick up something with three money from one of our two opponents. And that means we are in a pretty safe spot to buy this tile, which is certainly great. It's got the votes and it has a sheep on it. And we score one point at the end of the game for every two sheep we have. And we could also add this onto our area so that it is next to this farmhouse. So I think let's go with that. We could just turn this out into a two. And yeah, we will keep three money to the side. At this point, we are all ready, so we can simultaneously reveal, and then we have to get rid of the tiles that are associated with the discard tokens. After that, we can all see the prices that we've put next to these tiles. And the blue player is the first one to buy. Well, it looks like they are going to go cheap, or maybe they don't have the money to actually buy one of ours, so they're just going to spend one money in order to buy this tile that has two sheep on it. So that's going to go over here, and the yellow player will get two money. Up next, the yellow player can go, and they are going to spend four money in order to buy this tile from the blue player. So they are a little bit bummed not to get this farm, but they also just made four more money, which is pretty darn good for them. So this will head right over there, and now it's time for us to potentially make a purchase. And it looks like both of our options just cost two money, and we have three money. Now, interestingly enough, both of them have a scroll for the farms, so I like that. And this one has a whiskey for income, and this one has a sheep. Now that sheep could potentially give us more points for this farm, and also we get one point for every two sheep that we have. Uh, potentially we could double that if we enclose this area, so I think let's go ahead and pay the blue player. Now they had both of these bought away from them, so they have a ton of money at this point. Uh, this tile is now going to come over in front of us, and now we have all had an opportunity to buy tiles. This means the blue player just got one tile, the yellow player now buys this, so they have two, and we are going to buy both of these in front of us, so we get to place three tiles. Well, the things that we are trying to keep in mind involve getting our animals as close to this farm as possible, while also trying to keep our uh, territory as compact as possible to make as many two by two areas as we can. Now, obviously, we aren't going to be scoring that one for another uh, turn, but we still need to pay attention to that as we build the stuff out. Uh, in particular, that one that gives you two points for every two by two, uh, that would count for a two by two like this and another two by two like that. So you can actually score each tile multiple times if we keep everything nice and compact. Now we can see that both of these tiles have sheep on them, so we obviously want to keep them close to this farm. And we are also motivated to try and get these scrolls into completed areas. So we can add this right over here, and this could go down something like that. And in this case, we would be just one edge away from completing a grass area with two of these scrolls. Now, that does seem pretty good, but we could do something similar with that, I suppose. We could also put this like that so that we have a chance to potentially extend out this road. Now, realistically, we only need to enclose these territories by the end of the game. So if we can do it early, that's fine. But I don't think we should go too crazy trying to make it happen and make some really hard areas to fill in later. So one thing I think we should probably do is add this up here. Uh, obviously, that will match up with these two water areas, and we have successfully created a two-by-two two spot. Now, this edge can go out this way or that way, and I figure we will orient it like this. Actually, I changed my mind. If we put it like this, then we have the option of doing that, and we have just completed two of these two-by-two two areas, which again won't score in this round, but will be scoring very soon. So I think that is a good thing to work towards. Also, that sheep is diagonally adjacent to a farm, so it will score for us. So yeah, I think let's go with this. Well, it looks like both of our opponents are done, so it's now time to score. Just like I mentioned before, we are only going to be scoring B, and that gives each of us one point for every sheep or cow uh, diagonally or orthogonally adjacent to a farm, as well as on the tile with the farm. So we can look down here, and on all of these tiles, we just have two animals, so that is going to be two points which brings us to two. The blue player does not have any farms, so they don't score anything. And then over here, the yellow player has one farm, and they have one, two, three, four, five of these animals uh, next to that farm. Now, by putting this down here, they have not connected this whiskey up with their castle, so they're not getting the income, but they are getting points for it. So that was five points total, which brings yellow up to ten. With scoring done, the round has come to an end, so we can shift this over, and then the starting player token will head over to the yellow player. Now we can see down here that at the end of this round, we are going to score A and C, so we are trying to have the most chips while also scoring two points for every 2x2 two two area in our territory.
So let's begin with income, and you'll see that for the first time in the game, there is going to be bonus income given to players who are farther back on the score track. Now it's just one for now, and we currently have the least number of points. So that means we get one coin for every player ahead of us. There are two players ahead of us, which means we get two bonus income, and then the blue player has one of their opponents ahead of them, so blue is going to get a single additional income. After that, we can look at our territory, and we will get five coins for this, and we have just one of the whiskeys attached to our castle, so we get six more money. Over here, the blue player gets seven money, just like in the last round and the yellow player gets six money. Next up, it's time for everyone to draw three tiles out of the bag. After this, we can now set prices, although let's take a look at the other tiles before we actually make those decisions. Now, it appears that there are a lot of boats out here. Uh, the blue player has a single boat on all three of their tiles, so no matter what, two of these boats will still exist once we start buying. The yellow player has one boat over there, and, well, I guess we don't have any boats. But either way, that is still a potential of two to four boats that could be purchased later on in this round. So let's now figure out which of our tiles to discard and then price the other ones. Now, unfortunately, our tiles are not very interesting, <laughs> at least not with this current scoring. Uh, obviously, these brocks could be good later on in the game, uh, specifically when we're trying to have sets of the farms, the brocks, and the lighthouses. Uh, but right now, interestingly enough, I don't think we've seen a single lighthouse in this game. Uh, they aren't rare, they just happen to not be coming out of the bag. So realistically, I feel like we should probably just ax one of these two, uh, maybe this one over here, and then we could put a decent price on this one. Uh, this one does have a cow on it, which is good for us. That's worth an extra point. Plus, we could potentially put this cow right down over here, which would increase our income. Actually, we'd put it right over there to increase our income and also have the cow next to that farm. So this would be pretty good for us, and let's break this five up into smaller denominations. After this, we have to put at least one money down onto this, and we can do that. I don't think anyone's really going to go crazy on it. I don't see a reason to put more money there. But I think maybe we should add another money onto this one. Uh, that is quite good for us overall, and that leaves us with four money left over to potentially buy something. I feel like we should be able to get something good with this. All right, we have all made our decisions, so we can reveal these, and wow, those are some expensive tiles over there. Now, uh, first things first, we have to discard some tiles. This one's going to go away, as well as this farm, and then we, of course, discarded this tile. At this point, the yellow player can now make a purchase, but they are going to pass, so they are not going to buy anything, which means it's now our turn, and we have four money over here. Now, unfortunately, I kind of wish we had priced things a little bit differently, because if we had five money, we could have bought this tile over here. Now, that means we would have one, two, three, four boats, and when we look to the blue player's area, they were obviously pricing to buy these tiles, and that would put them at three boats. So we could have taken the majority, but we are just one money too shy. So instead, I suppose there's really no reason not to spend a money for this, so we can give the yellow player that money and then take this tile, and now the blue player can make a purchase. Well, we are not surprised to see them spend five of their money to pick up this tile here. Now that means all of this money goes over to the yellow player, which makes the yellow player a little bit happier, considering it does not look like they're going to score very well this round. And wow, the blue player has done a very good job of leveraging the large amount of money that they had going into this round. Obviously, having the yellow player buy out that farm for them ended up being really quite good, and the yellow player is now thinking that maybe they've been making some mistakes. Either way, we have now all had the opportunity to buy a tile from an opponent, so now we can buy all of the tiles in front of us. So we are going to spend 5 money getting these 2 tiles, and the blue player is going to spend 12 money in order to pick up these 2 tiles over there. So it looks like both us and blue got 3 tiles this round, and unfortunately for the yellow player, they did not pick up any. So let's add these tiles in, and I think we have a pretty good option available. We can add this one right over there, which gets that cow close enough to that farm to score in a future round. We've also connected this whiskey barrel up to the castle. Now, with this tile here, we could go down there, which seems pretty nice. That would connect the whiskey barrel up, and we are going to have three more incomes, so that would effectively give us three money throughout the game. But I think instead of that, let's place over here. Now, that means we might never actually connect this whiskey up to our castle, but it does mean we have completed a new 2x2 two two scoring area, which is what we are scoring in this round. Now we can finish this off with that tile here, which will fit nicely over there, making another 2x2 two two scoring area, and it also extended out this road, which means we could potentially throw whiskey barrels over here later on. So I'm feeling pretty good about how these tiles went together. 
Well, the blue player is done adding their tiles, and now it's time to score. We can look up here, and the first thing we will score is A, which is a majority of boats in the territories. Now, first place gets five points, and second place gets two points. And it looks like the yellow player has one boat, we have three boats, and the blue player has four boats. So blue is going to get five points, and we will get two. This means blue ties yellow up at ten, and we go up to four. And now we can score C, which are the two-by-two two areas, giving two points to each player. Well, it looks like the yellow player does not have any of those, so once again, they are having some regrets. Down here, we have one, two, three, four, so we are going to get eight points. And up here, the blue player has one, two, so they are going to get four more points. So blue goes up to 14, and we go up to 12, and that has finished out the scoring. So we can move this pawn over here, and then the starting player token will head back over to us. And it's now time to go into the fourth round of the game. Now, in this round, the players are going to get two coins for every person above them on the track. It looks like the yellow player is now uh, farthest behind, so they are going to get two plus two or four money, and we are going to get two extra money as income. Before we move on, let's take a look down at the scorings for this round. Now, it's going to be B and D. So B is going to be the animals that are next to or on top of our farms, and D is going to be five points for each set of Brock, Farm, and Lighthouse. Now again, we for some reason haven't seen any lighthouses yet, so if any show up in this round, I imagine they will be pretty sought after. Alright, let's continue taking income. And it looks like we are going to get 5 plus 2 from these whiskey barrels, so that means we get 7 more money. Up here, blue also gets 7 money. And lastly, yellow gets 6 money. Alright, it's now time for all of us to draw 3 tiles from the bag. Well, it looks like there are three lighthouses that have shown up, although we each have one of them, so there is a possibility that all of them get discarded before we actually have a chance to buy things. Now, we got a few of these uh, boats. We also got a farm, and that appears to be the only farm that showed up. So if we don't discard this, then uh, one of our opponents could potentially pay us quite a bit of money to get it down and help score some of their animals. Well, it's time for us to figure out our discard as well as our pricing. Now, we have some interesting tiles here, considering we are going to be scoring boats one more time in the game. We have a lighthouse, and we have one farm. Now, the blue player does want a farm, although we also would not mind having a farm out here, because we get one point at the end of the game for every farm in our territories when the game is over. In addition to that, you need a farm to make the set of the lighthouse, brock, and farm. So the blue player currently, well, they don't actually have any of those things. So they might be pretty motivated to take this if this is still out here. So we could potentially make some money on it, I suppose. Or we could just deny the blue player points by discarding this tile so they don't even have the option. Now, we do win if we have the most points. So I think let's be a little bit mean and get rid of this tile. This means we have to price out these other two tiles, and it looks like we currently have 12 money. Now, we are the starting player, so we have to make sure to have enough cash on hand after we put these out here to potentially buy a good tile, and it seems like at this point in the game, we all have a decent amount of money. Now, one other thing to consider is us just trying to buy out our own tiles. We currently have two brocks, and we have one farm, so getting one lighthouse means we would get five extra points. Also, it looks like both of these tiles could be used to cap this off, which would complete that terrain to double the scores that we get for each one of these two scrolls. If we got both of them, then we could use the other one to cap this off and double that scroll up there as well. So these are obviously pretty good tiles for us. Now, if you remember back to the last round, we were just one money shy of being able to buy a tile we really wanted. Uh, we had four left, and we could have used five. However, as the game goes on and people get more income, the relative value of things is hard to judge, and it goes up. Also, we have to keep in mind that every five coins that we have at the end of the game is worth a point. So we don't necessarily want to throw, like, you know, uh, ten money onto one thing if it's not going to be worth at least two points to us, because that is what we are giving up. Of course, if we put 10 money down and somebody buys it, then we just made extra points, which is also good, and that's really where the crux of this game comes in. Now, I think no matter what, each of these is definitely going to be two, and let's break this down into smaller pieces. This should help us out with our decision making, and we could potentially put these two down here again. Obviously, like I said, these are great tiles, and that would leave us with four money left over. Now, this is uh, not necessarily priced in a way that we know that our opponents wouldn't take them, but we do need money left over, and while I would love to get both of these, I feel like maybe this is a pretty good spot to stop. 
Uh, having four money should be enough in order to buy something, although it might not be enough to guarantee that we get a lighthouse. You know what? I'm going to hedge my bets. Let's put a one down here instead of a two. I think this tile is not as attractive to our opponents. There is uh, obviously going to be one more boat scoring, but the fact that there's only one more boat scoring versus the three scorings for the sets of the lighthouses, brocks, and farms makes those a little bit more tempting. So I think let's go with this, and we have five money left over in our pocket. All right, let's see what everyone decided to do. Wow, it looks like yellow suddenly had money, and they decided to spend a lot of it, putting seven down for both of these. Now, the next thing that we have to do is to discard the cards that have that token next to it, so all of these will go back to the bag. And now it's time for us to optionally make a purchase. Now, with five money, I think we definitely should buy something, and it is going to be one of these two tiles over there, because the yellow player's tiles are way too expensive for us. Now, I think it might be worth it for us to spend five bucks. That would let us take this one, it'll give us a boat for the last boat scoring, and it will give us one lighthouse. And again, I am not at all confident we'll be able to keep this lighthouse down here. Now, in an interesting uh, turn of mechanics, if we give the blue player all of this money, then they will obviously have enough money in order to buy this back from us if they wanted to. Uh, potentially, maybe they'd go after something else, I'm not exactly sure, although we can look over here and see that they have two scrolls that give them one point at the end of the game for every lighthouse that they have. Now, I suppose the alternative is we could just not spend our money and just keep this over here to try and keep these two tiles, but I do like the fact that this has a boat on it, so let's go for it. Uh, we will spend five money over to the blue player, they can take this back, and we have now purchased this tile, and now the blue player can buy something. Well, it looks like they are indeed going to spend four money to buy this tile here. Uh, maybe what we did was the wrong choice, but either way, we now have four money, and they have that lighthouse over here, and now the yellow player can make a purchase. After looking over their options, they are going to spend three money and give it over to the blue player. So that means both of the blue player's tiles have been taken, and now the yellow player can buy both of these tiles in front of them for 14 money, and we will buy this tile for three money. So we have two tiles to add, blue has one, and the yellow player has three. Let's now go ahead and add these down, and we could use this one to cap off either one of these two grass fields. I suppose this one has two scrolls to the one of that field, so let's prioritize this field over here. Now at this point, do we have a possibility of making another 2x2? Two two? Yeah, we do. Awesome. That works out pretty well. All right, it looks like we are all done adding our new tiles, so it's now time to score. The first thing we will score are the animals onto or next to the tiles with farms. And we currently have one, two, three of those animals. So that's going to give us three points, which will bring us to 15. Next up, the blue player does not have a farm yet, so they get zero points for this. And then the yellow player's one farm here is next to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those animals. So yellow will get eight points. That's going to bring them up to 18. And now we can all get five points for every set of Brock, Farm, and Lighthouse that we have in our territories. Well, we have one farm and one lighthouse, as well as two Brocks, so we have just one set, which gives us five points. The blue player just has a lighthouse and no Brocks or farmhouses, so they get nothing. And then the yellow player has a farm, a lighthouse, and a Brock, so they are going to get five points for that one set. So our five points will bring us up to 20, the yellow player's five points are going to bring them up to 23, and we are now done scoring this round. This means we now need to pass the starting player token over here to the blue player, and then we can move into the fifth round of the game. This means we can start off with income, and it looks like the blue player has two opponents ahead of them on the track, so they are going to get three plus three, or six extra income, and we have one opponent ahead of us, so we will get three extra income. So the yellow player does not get anything extra, although they do currently have more points than the rest of us. Next up, we can take our territory incomes, and it looks like we get five plus three from those three whiskey barrels. So we get eight more money. And then up here, the blue player still gets seven, because these whiskey barrels are not connected back here to their castle. Lastly, the yellow player gets seven income, because they have two whiskey barrels connected back. Well, the next thing we have to do is draw three tiles for each player. Next up, we can start setting our prices, but before we do that, let's take a brief look and see what the different options are out here on the table. Now, we have, it looks like, a double boat and a single boat, 
we have a few different animals going on as well. And remember, we are going to get one point at the end of the game for every cow that we have, so that would be nice. Also, we have an opportunity to potentially pick up a tile to cap this off. It looks like there are three tiles up here that could do that to actually make that two points per cow. Now, uh, up here, it looks like the blue player has two of these lighthouses showing and two brocks. So no matter what, there will be at least one lighthouse up for offer. And then over here, the yellow player has a farm and then several ships over here as well. So let's now figure out which tile to discard. Now, at the moment, it looks like we have six boats. The blue player has four and the yellow player has one. And this is going to be the final round where we score for those boats. So trying to have the most is certainly going to be good. And at the moment, we do have the most by two. Now, this has two boats on it. So that means if the blue player buys this from us, then they would be tying. And it is worth noting that they don't have any tiles in front of them that show boats. Now, we could discard this. But unfortunately, the yellow player also has a tile that shows two boats. Now, if there is a tie between the two of us, that is fine, actually, because it's a friendly tie, so we will both get the higher amount. So I'm not sure how important it is to deny that. I suppose we could get rid of this to make it less likely that the blue player would be able to tie us, because the yellow player also has a tile with a farm, which the blue player would definitely like to have. So let's go ahead and discard the central tile, and now we have to price these other two on the outside. Now, unfortunately, neither one of these will fit up along here to create another 2x2 two two for us. And also, we have just one farm, and it is now fully surrounded, so we do not have the ability to add more animals next to that farm. Now, we are going to score the farm animal adjacency one more time in the sixth and final round of the game, so getting more animals isn't bad, especially considering we have scrolls to give us extra points at the end of the game for the sheep and the cows that we have. So I think let's start off a little bit light. We can put two money next to each of these. And I'm not sure how crazy our opponents will be to try and buy these off of us. It seems like they might have better tiles overall. So I don't want to spend a bunch of money over here. Because remember, at the end of the game, every five money is worth a point. So just by sending a two over here, we are giving up almost half a point just to take this tile. Now we know that if we got to keep this tile, we would get uh, at least one point because of the cow on it. And if one of our opponents bought it from us, then we would be making almost half a point. Now, I think we could consider adding an extra money to each of these in case our opponents decide to buy them off of us. They would give us a little bit more money. But honestly, looking at the options that our opponents have, I feel like they are more likely to buy from each other than to buy from us. That is a bit unfortunate, but because of that, I think we can go low and potentially uh, buy both of these tiles at the end of this round. All right, we have all made our decisions, so we can reveal our prices. And it looks like the blue player has some very expensive tiles over there. Now, first things first, we can discard the indicated tiles. And now the blue player has the option to buy a tile. Well, it looks like they are going to spend seven of their money in order to buy this tile, and that's going to officially give them a farm for the first time in the game. Now, this is going to be the last round in which the farm animal adjacency scoring works, but this does help them with trying to get sets for the D scoring option. So they can add that right over here, and now the yellow player has the option to buy. And instead of spending a bunch of money, which they do have now that the blue player just paid them, they are going to spend two of their money to buy this tile here. So that means this money is going to go into our area, and now it's time for us to make a purchase if we want to. Part of me is tempted to take this tile here. Now that would cost us 10 money, which is effectively two victory points. But we could take this tile and put it right down here, which would create another 2x2, two two, which is going to score in this round and the last round of the game. And every 2x2 two two is worth two points. So we would essentially be paying two points in order to make four points total, plus potentially more because that has a lighthouse on it. And in that case, we would have a couple of lighthouses, we have a couple brocks, and we would just need a farm to make another one of those sets. So I think this is probably going to be worth it to us, even though it's quite expensive. We can pay the blue player 10 money, and they can take all of this back. And now we have all had a chance to buy. So that means we can purchase the things in front of us for the prices that we associated with them. And it's now time to add these tiles into our territory. Now, the only reason we bought this tile is so that we could do that. So I think we should certainly do that. And I guess we could consider putting it like that instead to try and cap off this green area. But I think this makes a lot more sense for us at the moment. Now we have this one over here as well. And we could put it up here. That would increase our income by one. And we still have not locked in this territory. But we just need a single side greenery to make that happen potentially in the next round. 
Well, I think that's a good enough spot for that tile, so we are now done with our placement. At the same time, we were adding our tiles, so were our opponents, and it looks like they are now ready to score. So let's start with A, which is going to be the ship majorities. And it looks like the yellow player has three ships. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ships. And the blue player has one, two, three, four. So that means we are certainly in first place, which is going to give us five points. So that will bring us up to 25. And then the blue player is just barely uh, beating out the yellow player for second place. So they are going to get two points, bringing them up to 16. After that, we can then score C, which is going to be two points for every 2x2 two two grid that we have. Now, it looks like we are doing very well with that. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 points coming in from that scoring, which is going to bring us up to 37. Next up, the blue player is just going to score this twice. They could have used this tile down here to make a third scoring, but they decided going up here made more sense because of the adjacency to other animals for the last round scoring. So in this case, they have 2 plus 2, or 4 points, which is going to bring them up to 20. Next up, we have the yellow player, and they're going to get 2, 4, 6, 8 points, and that's going to bring them from 23 up to 31. Lastly, we can score D, and that is 5 points for every Brock, Lighthouse, and Farm set that each player has. Now it looks like we have 2 Lighthouses, we have 2 Brocks, and just 1 Farm, so that is 5 points for us, bringing us from 37 up to 42. Next up, the blue player has two Brocks, one Lighthouse, and one Farm, so they have one set, which brings them up to 25. Lastly, the yellow player over here has, I think, just one of each of those. Yeah, so they also get five points, bringing them to 36. All right, scoring is done, so we can now finish out this round by passing the starting player token over to the yellow player. And then we can move one space on the track, which means we are now starting the sixth and final round of the game. Let's start things off with income, and it looks like players are going to get four coins for every one of their opponents that is farther ahead of them on the score track. So this means the blue player will get eight coins total, and the yellow player will get four. Next up, let's take our territory income, and it looks like we are going to get five, six, seven, eight, nine more money. Following that, it looks like the blue player is going to once again get seven income from their territories. Lastly, yellow is also going to get seven income from their territory. Well, for the last time in the game, it's now time for each of us to draw three tiles out of the back. After that, it's now time to make some tile pricing decisions, and let's take a look out here and see what the options are. Now, we have a couple of boats, which largely don't matter, unless, of course, you have a uh, scroll that gives you points for boats. We also have a brock and a lighthouse. Now, over here, the blue player has a couple of lighthouses, as well as that scroll that gives points for boats. And considering we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boats, well, that would be worth three points right there at the end of the game. So that's definitely not bad. Now, over here, the yellow player has a farm, a lighthouse, a couple of animals, and a brock. So there are some pretty good tiles all over the place. And remember, for this final scoring, we are going to be scoring up the animals adjacent to farms, our 2 by 2s in our territories, as well as our sets of lighthouse, brock, and farms. All right, it's now time to make some pricing decisions, as well as to decide which one of these tiles to discard. Now, this would be a nice tile for us to have. It's the only one of the tiles that we have currently that could block that off in order to double our scoring for our cows, although we currently only have two cows, but that still would be two more points. Now, we could use this in another way to go over there to get another 2x2, two two, which is also worth two points. So this tile is a pretty good one for us overall. I suppose this one could also fit in over there to get our two more points. Now we do have one more tile which does have a cow and a lighthouse, and we don't care about lighthouses, but we do kind of care about cows. Now we could potentially leave this one out and put a decent price on it and hope that our opponents maybe buy it out from us because, well, the lighthouse is really good for the blue player overall, or we could just discard it so they don't have a shot at those points. I think realistically, let's go with that, and now we can price out these two tiles. Now it would be nice to take both of them, obviously this one could go there and that one would go there, as I said before, that would effectively be worth two points per tile, so I don't think we should go crazy with the pricing on these. We could put two on both of them, which is almost half a point each, and that would leave us with 12 extra money that we could use to buy other tiles. Yeah, I think we'll go with this pricing. All right, it's now time to reveal our opponent's prices, and it looks like once again the blue player has some expensive tiles over there. Next up, we can discard the indicated tiles. And it's now time for the yellow player to potentially do a purchase. 
Now, they have decided they like the idea of this tile down here. So they are going to pay us to money, and we get this back. And perhaps maybe we should have made that a little more expensive. I didn't expect this to be as attractive to our opponents, but this is the one that the yellow player wants. After that, we can now make a purchase, and it looks like we have 14 money, so we could buy any of these options out here. Now, the first thing that I'm looking for is something that will finish out this region. Obviously, that will double the amount of points we get for our cows. We do only have two cows at the moment, though. So if we bought this one for 10 money, which would effectively be worth two points, we could go over here, which would get us two points. So we'd be floating even there, but we would also get one point for every two ships that we have. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by purchasing this, we would still end up with three more points than we would have otherwise. Honestly, I don't think we're going to get more than three points from these other options, so I think we are going to spend 10 money to buy this tile, and the blue player is starting to regret not making that even more expensive. Lastly, the blue player can make a purchase, and they have decided they are going to spend 7 money in order to buy this one from the yellow player. Alright, we've all made our purchase, so we can now buy the tiles that are still face up in front of us. And now let's add these into our territory, although I just realized I made a slight mistake. We grabbed the wrong 10 money tile from in front of the blue player, so we have corrected that right here. This is the tile that I definitely wanted to spend the 10 money on, and that's because we could put it right over here, and then this one will fit nicely right over there, making another 2x2 two two for us. Alright, we are now done with our placements, so it's now time to score. So let's look up here, and we'll start scoring B, which is 1 point per animal next to or on top of a farm. Well, we have just one farm here, and there are three animals next to it, so that is three points for us. This will bring us up to 45, and now the blue player does have a farm here, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six animals on or adjacent. So that's going to be six points for them, bringing them to 31. Next up, the yellow player's farm over here has even more animals around it than before. It looks like that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten animals. So that's going to bring them from 36 up to 46. Let's now move on to scoring C, which will be two points for every 2x2 two two area in our territories. Well, we've done really good at this, and it looks like that'll be worth 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 points. Well, we were at 45 points, so this will jump us all the way up to 59. Next up, we can look to the blue player's area, and unfortunately, they just have 2, 4, 6 points coming in from this, so that is going to bring them from 31 up to 37. After that, the yellow player is going to get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 points, which will bring them from 46 up to 56. All right, the final thing to score is the sets of Lighthouse, Brock, and Farm. And I'm pretty sure all of us just have one of these sets. The yellow player has two Brocks, one Lighthouse, and one Farm. So yeah, that's going to bring them from 56 up to 61. And then we still have just one farm and multiple Brocks and multiple lighthouses. So that's just one set bringing us up to 64. And the blue player is in the same situation with just that one farm. So interestingly enough, farms ended up being the limiter on the scoring, whereas it looked like lighthouses were going to be it. Uh, either way, blue does get five points, which brings them from 37 up to 42. And we've now finished the sixth and final round of the game. This means the game is over and it's now time to score up our end game points. Now we can start by scoring our scrolls, and remember, we get twice as many points for every scroll in a completed terrain area. Let's start with ourselves, and we have four scrolls overall. Now, three of these are in completed areas, which is awesome, so that means this is going to give us two points for every farm we have, and we have one, so that's two points. This will give us uh, two points for every two sheep that we have, and we have exactly two sheep, so that's two more points. And then this will give us two points for every cow, and we have two cows. So, so far we are at six points, and then this one is not in an enclosed area, so that's one point for every two boats that we have, so that's one, two, three more points. So all told, we get nine points for our scrolls. This will bring us from 64 up to 73. Next up, the blue player has three scrolls, and all of them are in this completed lake area. Now we can see that two of them will give them one point for every lighthouse they have, and one is a point for every brock, and they are all doubled. So effectively, this is two points per lighthouse plus two points per lighthouse, or four points per lighthouse, and two points per brock. So we can look out, and they have one, two, three, four lighthouses, so that is 16 points there, and they also have one, two brocks, so that is going to be four more points, bringing this up to 20 points for their scrolls. So this will jump them from 42 all the way up to 62. 
Lastly, the yellow player only picked up one scroll, and it's not in a completed area, and it gives them one point for every farm they have, and they only have one farm. Those farms were hotly contested throughout the game, only three ended up getting built, so this is just a single scroll point for them. So they are now tied with blue at 62, and the final thing that we have to score is points for our money. So we are going to turn in five money for one point. And it looks like we ended the game with eight money, so that is going to give us a single extra point, bringing our final score up to 74. Next up, the blue player ended with 28 money, so they can get rid of 25 of this in order to get five more points, which will bring them from 62 up to 67. Oops, that is 67 right there. And then finally, the yellow player ended with exactly 30 money, so they can get rid of all of that, which will give them 6 points, and that will bring them from 62 up to 68, and this means we have our final scores. It looks like we were able to win, although not by a gigantic amount, considering how much we were scoring for this one earlier on. Uh, the yellow player just barely comes in at second place, and blue is in third, and that completes our full three-player game of Isle of Sky. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. It's always fun to win, and we were able to do that here, although both of our opponents were not actually that far behind us at the end of the game. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see how we all got our points. Uh, the yellow player was kind of consistently ahead for a lot of the game, and because of that, they were consistently kind of poor when it came to the coins that they were trying to spend. I think they were also maybe a little bit too aggressive with some of their pricing. Uh, there were a couple rounds there where they probably spent more uh, on the pricing than they necessarily needed to, which kind of kept them always at a lower uh, uh, amount of coins than the rest of us. Um, I guess they did have a round or two where they had a decent amount, but it seemed like uh, more often than not, they were in a kind of trouble spot. In fact, one round, they didn't buy anything from any of their opponents, which definitely kind of set them back. Now, they were able to claw back up and again, be quite close to the winner, uh, through just scoring a ton of points for their animals around their farm, as well as putting together a decent number of those 2x2 two two areas. Now, the blue player was awful at the 2x2s, two and because of that, they were lagging really far behind before we went into the final scoring of the scrolls, but they got a ton of points for the scrolls that they were able to uh, put into that completed area for the lighthouses and the brocks that they had. Um, now, unfortunately, they had kind of a spindly-looking territory, so they did not score well for the 2x2s two ever throughout the game, and I think realistically that is probably the reason that we won. We got consistently great amount of points for having a very compact territory to take advantage of that scoring condition. Now, of course, in this game we had four scoring conditions, but as I showed at the beginning of the tutorial, there are a ton of other ones. So you are not always going to be trying to stay compact. In fact, there is a scoring condition that makes you want to do really long columns uh, and not necessarily uh, kind of keep your stuff overall together, and there are just a wide variety of others, like uh, trying to have the most um, overall uh, coins that you are making, as well as uh, other ways you can score for things like sheep and whatnot. So um, the way those scorings are going to come out and the order that they're going to come out is really going to affect how you are going to play the game. Obviously, we were going really hard on boats early on and kind of ignoring things like the brocks and the lighthouses. And uh, at the end of the game, those were very valuable uh, things to have in our territories because those scorings were suddenly very prevalent and and suddenly nobody cared at all about the boats, unless, of course, somebody had a specific scroll scoring for the boats, which, of course, we had. Uh, so you definitely have to balance all of these things together, and it seems like at the end of the game, we did that best, and I think that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you, too, would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.